This is Blackman Cheerleading. Uh, for some of you, this is uh, your fourth year doing this, and you're tired of coming to this meeting. Uh, but for a lot of you, uh, it's new information, and um, it can be a little overwhelming at times because uh, we have a really big program, a really successful program, and we think that we offer something for everybody, no matter what your child's ability is. Uh, we have an option here for them, which is what we're really proud of. Um, let me introduce everybody. Uh, my name's Courtney Gregory. I, uh, along with Heather Wortman, who generally is 15 minutes late, uh, she will come here. Uh, but she and I coach the uh, co-ed football uh, squad together. Um, I'm going to do, whoever's got the mic's going to be doing the talking. We're recording this for future parents who, um, who couldn't be here tonight. So uh, this is Stacy Henderson. She is our coach of our JV squad. They will be competing. They will be cheering for... Uh, JV football and JV basketball and competing in one or more uh, competitive div divisions. This is Christy Covington. She is one of the two coaches of the varsity basketball squad. They also compete in the non-tumbling division. Uh, and this is Erica Griggs, who is also her counterpart uh, on the basketball squad. So uh, we have three squads here. If you are an eighth grader, you may try out for any of our any or all of our three teams one of the great things that we do here is we let you choose what you want to be um, um, considered for so if you want to be only on one squad and that's it you can just try out for one squad if you want to be considered for any squad uh, you can uh, you can make that choice as well and we'll talk about how you do that here in just a second but uh, that's the big thing here is that it's up to you what teams or you want to be on okay um, what we're going to do real quickly is, if you look at this cheerleading tryout procedure, I'm going to go through the, f the first page of that with you, and then uh, we're going to bounce around. I'm not reading everything to you, uh, but there, uh, Blackman cheerleading is kind of a way of life. Um, th the culture that we've created here is one of, uh, certainly of success, but uh, it's hard work and dedication, often with the kids going far and above beyond even what the coaches expect of them because they're so driven. They are so driven to be better. Um, and so that translates to lots of time away from home. Uh, so we'll talk more about each team in, in here as we go. All right, so the procedures. To be eligible to try out for cheerleading on any of our squads, if you are in high school, you must have a 2.3 GPA, okay? If you are in middle school, an eighth grader coming in, we do not have a GPA requirement. Uh, we try to wipe the slate clean between middle school and high school, we have found that to be pretty successful. Uh, people who had maybe an ISS indiscretion or, or struggled academically, sometimes when they get involved in high school, it changes everything for them. And so if your child is in eighth grade, they kind of get a one-year free pass to try out for cheerleading here at Blackman. Um, you will have to have a completed application and a coach or teacher score, uh, will, that's here in the packet. Uh, if you have been a cheerleader before, you need to get a coach's recommendation. Uh, even if it's an all-star coach or a gymnastics coach, if you, don't, if you have not cheered before and this is your first experience, you can just get a teacher's recommendation, all right? Uh, and that form is in this packet, so that's not something you have to get a letter written. It's just a form that they fill out. Uh, letter C there, uh, proof of residency. Yes, I know that you have already done that once this year, and you'll do it again for tryouts, and then you'll do it again in the fall. They have to constantly be vigilant that you are constantly zoned, not just in August for your home, but that you are throughout the year zoned for your home. So we'll need another utility bill. Uh, and then you will have to have had an updated physical within the last 12 months. Okay, Physicals, we'll talk more about that also. Uh, that's Miss Covington's. Uh, she's, she's our our physical lady. Um, a failure to meet any of these items will result in disqualification from tryouts. So please, if your child has a 1.7 GPA, please don't bring them to tryouts. Tell them that, that the answer is no. Because when we do that, when you guys let them come and they have a 1.7 and you filled out all this paperwork, we have to have the really uncomfortable conversation of telling them you can't be here. And that's not fun for us. So as a parent, please take Take that responsibility to make sure your child understands that a 2.3 is what they have to have to try out, okay? Um, number two, I just went over that. The most recent cheerleading or gym coach, uh, if, they don't, if you haven't cheered before, you'll give it to a teacher. That does need to be returned in a sealed envelope with a teacher or coach's name signed across that back flap. 
All of these papers will be returned to Miss Covington. Raise your hand, Miss Covington, one more time. Uh, and she will, uh, that, that's during the week of tryouts, you'll be bringing all this paperwork in to her. No? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, number three, this is important, winter tryouts. They are held in the Blackman uh, Gym April 20th through the 22nd. If you've been, if you've cheered with us before, that's a little different. That's one day less than we normally try out. We're doing uh, some pre-scoring uh, this year that, uh, of some other, of some, um, we're, we're doing some pre-scoring to make things a little bit faster. So it'll be a three-day tryout instead of a two-day, I mean, instead of a four-day, excuse me. Each candidate must wear tennis shoes, shorts, and a shirt and have her hair secured and off the shoulders. No jewelry, not, they shouldn't wear any kind of black. We don't care what colors, they can wear blue and orange, they can wear whatever they want, but no cheerleading attire. So no um, Blackman Middle cheer or Premier Athletics cheer or Rutherford Raiders cheer, just general, generic Blackman shirts or uh, generic shirts, okay? Uh, tryout dates and times, the 20th. We will, uh, we do things a little differently here. We don't just have one day where they come in and they do all the stuff they learn. Every day we score something. Um, the judges are, uh, are myself and Miss Wortman, uh, Miss Griggs, this, oh, Miss Wortman, I told you she'd be here. I know, I know, I just forgot. I just, like, I was in the middle of something. Uh, and then, oh, and then, yeah, okay, so, and then Miss Griggs, so. Uh, we'll be uh, judging as well as a couple of our coaches from our gym. Uh, and we judge something every day. So the first day we'll judge jumps and tumbling. Uh, and we'll get into some stunt groups. And uh, the second day we will, judge, uh, others, we will judge other stunt groups. And then the third day you'll have your individual where, you'll learn, well, where you will perform your cheer uh, and your band dance. Okay. Uh, the cheer and the band dance are going to be uploaded this year, um, as we've done in the past. Uh, probably by the end of the day tomorrow, we will have our cheer and our band dance for trial uploaded to the Blackman Cheer YouTube page. Um, I think it's written on here in a minute, but um, okay. Uh, oh, is this just constantly going behind me? Oh, you're rolling with me. Okay, sorry. Uh, but our, our Blackman Cheer has a YouTube channel. And you'll go to the YouTube channel, and it will say 2019 tryout. Right now it says, I'm sorry, it says 20. Sorry, it will say 2020 tryout. Right now, we only have our 2019 stuff up there. I'm going to go delete that tonight. But it will be up probably by the end of the day tomorrow. The kids are filming tonight while we're here. And uh, so hopefully that the kids, all the kids will have equal opportunity and a whole month to learn that material. So um, there really shouldn't be any question. Nobody should be missing anything. Uh, for us, it's not about how fast you learn. It's about it's about how, how sharp your emotions are, how loud you are, how you cut off your words. We'll go over the score sheet. But that's what's important. So um, no parents or friends are allowed at practice or tryout. It is closed. Uh, tryout, uh, number five, tryout results will be posted on the Blackman cheerleading website at bhscheers.weebly.com no earlier than 8 o'clock uh, on April 22nd. Uh, if there's a technology issue, for some reason the server goes down and I can't get them uploaded, then the scores will be posted on the outside doors down by the main entrance to the gym. I don't like to do that. We've never had to do that. Um, but just I like to have a plan B, right, if there's a problem. Now, one caveat for this year. Uh, if you make the co-ed squad, once that is posted, you will have to immediately come back here to the high school um, because we have some events that we'll talk about in the calendar that are coming up the, day, the next day and the day after. And so we'll have a, a quick little meeting here that night. Okay, so if you make the co-ed squad, we'll, once that gets posted, uh, we will have a quick meeting back here at the school. We'll be, yeah, we'll keep that a secret, but you'll just have to come for a few minutes. All right, uh, and then trial scores will consist of the following, and there are the, the pieces uh, that add up the score sheet, and Ms. Griggs will go over that when we get to that page. We'll just go on, we're going to roll through to the next thing. All right, uh, Blackman cheerleading guidelines. Guys, here are all the rules. I, I sat through a meeting the other day and I thought, well, this isn't very fun. It was about cheerleading for my own daughter and I was listening to them go over rules. I was like, this isn't very fun. So I'm not gonna do that. But I am gonna go over just a few key rules that um, I wanna make sure that everybody's clear on. Number one, practice uh, is set by the coaches and it is mandatory. Um, each of us, we have the same attendance rule but it is very important your child be there this is high school this is you're no longer in middle school you're no longer 
um, a part of a club or youth rec team. It is a high school and especially, you know, well, especially for all of us, we all compete. And so it's not like, oh, if you miss one night, it's not going to hurt us on the sidelines. It's not just about sidelines. It's about competing and being there for your team. So um, it's, it's absolutely mandatory. Number three, um, every three tardies to, to practice will be equivalent to one unexcused absence. Number four, monthly calendars will be given in advance so personal schedules can be worked around practice. However, note that practices may be added or changed on an as-needed basis without being on the calendar. Um, college clinics are not an excused absence from mandatory events. So really the reason we had to add that is because, you know, we can give you a calendar. We've given you a calendar you'll see months in advance. But we can tell you right now that something's going to happen that is going to change it. So we're going to try to give you an, a, a great idea uh, on each of our calendars of what's going to happen. But sometimes there's going to be little changes. And we've just got to be really flexible with that. Okay, you guys can kind of read through... Um, the rest of that page. I do want to say letter H, fall tryout. We do, uh, we are required to have a fall tryout only for people who moved in over the summer or who were ineligible to try out in the spring. Um, so that is something that happens every year. I'd just like to give you a heads up. We don't necessarily have to take anybody on that team, uh, but we, uh, on, on any of our teams, but sometimes we do pick up new people. So, uh, but again, it's only for people who were not eligible to try out now. Okay, so you don't get to say, oh, I want off all summer and I'll try out in the fall. Uh, that's not how it works, so I just want to be clear on that. Uh, the next page, uh, Roman numeral three, safety regulations. Uh, a Rutherford County faculty member will be president, present at all school practices. You also will have the premier staff uh, available at all the premier practices, and the squad will follow ACA safety guidelines, um, which is actually now called USA Cheer, but that's okay. We'll change that for next year. Um, it got bought out. But all of us up here are USA Cheer slash ACA certified, meaning we've all been through a training course in how to, um, in, in how to uh, promote safe cheer, cheerleading, okay? Um, Ms. Wortman and I have been coaching for about 22 years. You've been coaching... She's relatively new, but you've done great in your, your short tenure. And you guys have been coaching basketball for how long together? For six years. So you're lucky you've got a really veteran group of coaches who uh, are very safety-minded. And, and I, I'm a rule follower, so it's, it's very important to me. Uh, varsity, we did buy our co-ed, sorry, co-ed team. We did buy some concussion helmets, safety helmets for our flyers that's, uh, we, that we use as a training and safety um, just, just as they're learning new skills because inversions are, they can go upside down now. And so when kids start going upside down and spinning, I think we probably need to put something on their head. That's kind of where that came from. Do what? Yes, with giant boys underneath them, but still. Uh, it, it's that, those are some of the safety things that we do. Uh, number four, summer camp. I do want to touch on that. The, um, the squad will attend a summer training camp, whichever squad they make, and attendance at that camp is mandatory. Uh, there is something we'll talk about. There is some summertime where you guys have some flexibility to take off, but whatever date you see on, that, on your calendar for the team that you make is absolutely not negotiable, okay, that camp, because we're paying a great deal of money, especially co-ed because we have somebody come from out of state to come down and give us a routine, and it's a lot of money, and so uh, we can't have people absent uh, not help, not not learning the skill because then, then it hurts all of us. So that's true of all of our camps. We're all learning stuff, materials that we're going to learn for our routines. Okay. Uh, Roman numeral five, expected behaviors. Not going to read all those, but I do want to touch on a few that we have to kind of um, remind the kids about from from now and then. Uh, letter I, any cheerleader not at school on a game day may not cheer that night and must sit with the coach or parent if attending the game. Attendance at school means at least half a day. So we have that sometimes where the kid's like, oh, I'm not feeling like going to school today, and then they want to show up at the game. That's not something you can do. If you're not at school uh, as, as an excused absence, right, then, um, then you, can, you, you could miss the game if it was an excused absence. If it's an unexcused absence, you'll have to be at uh, the game. Uh, letter M, lack of participation due to injury or personal health must be accompanied by a doctor's note. Any injured cheerleader is still required to attend all cheer functions, extended injury responsibilities, or at the discretion of coaches and administration. So here's what I'm saying. Everybody's going to hurt. They're all going to have bruises. They're going to, I mean, that's the nature of any sport. Um, you're going to have rolled ankles. You're going to have, uh, oh, my hand got hurt. My finger got jammed. I got hit in the face. Things are going to happen. Um, and so if you need to sit, if something hurts so bad that you need to sit out from a practice, 
then we're going to need a doctor's note for that because, or, or our trainer. We have a trainer here on site and you can go see the trainer and as long as he releases you, that's fine. But you're going to have to see some kind of medical personnel if you're not able to practice because of an injury. And that's just to cover everybody uh, in terms of liability. Letter N, grades an F in a nine weeks will result in a game suspension until mid-progress, uh, report cards, or until improved, whichever comes first. Uh, we are zero tolerance on grades. If I didn't already mention that with our GPA requirement, um, that is true during the year. The first thing we do at progress report and report card time is we pull them, we look at them, we flag them, and they'll sit out until their grade is appropriate. Okay? And thank you. If you sit out so many games, but cut three. If you sit out three or more football games, I can say football. I don't know what, what's the number for you guys. Three. Okay. If you sit out three or more games for any reason, okay, then you're dismissed from the team. So if you can't get your grades up within the, those three games, okay, then you're dismissed from the team. You, you, we, we've got to, we, we that, like seriously zero tolerance on the grade thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the back page, um, we, you guys do not have to buy a uniform. We don't have a uniform fee, which is great news because we have five uniforms. Nobody's got the kind of money to go buy five new uniforms. So what we do is what we call a rental fee. Um, every cheerleader will pay, pay a, 50, a $25 rental fee per uniform. And the great thing about that is that's what keeps us, we have a separate account for uniforms, so every three years we can afford a new uniform based on these rental fees, and then that's not having to come out of your pocket to go buy five uniforms. Um, and that has worked out really well for all of us to do it that way. Um, and letter, uh, Roman numeral eight, dismissal. If a cheerleader is dismissed or resigns from a squad at any point in the year, she, he or she is still financially liable for costs incurred and or committed at that time. This includes any future events where deposits have been made and costs have been divided among squad members. Um, and if any of you have any kind of balance on any of our teams or any team in the school, you are on what's called, um, um, what's Christy do? The, Christy, you, the O's list, I don't know why that was so hard for me to come up with as an English teacher. Uh, we have an O's list and you will be on that O's list and, and you will not be able to try out until those are cleared, okay? Um, and then letter B, uh, if a cheerleader is dismissed or resigns from the squad during the summer, he or she is not allowed to try out for any squad for a full calendar year, meaning he or she may not try out in the fall for the same or different squad. So you can't try out now and quit over the summer and then come back in the fall. I kind of already addressed that. All right, last thing I'm going to talk about under discipline is what we call time for time. As I was referring to earlier, summer, I know like Folks have big important things, like there's a church camp that I really want to go to, or my family's 50th wedding anniversary, my parents is that weekend, and I, I, I can't miss. We give every single family one week. Uh, well, is it, is, it's, no, 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 three practices, three or four practices, six hours, thank you. Six hours of practices that they can miss over the course of the summer, okay? that don't count against them. It's called, uh, it's called, but what's called, it's called time for time. Meaning, if you, you can miss up to six hours, but you will then owe us six hours in community service. And generally, we will set those community service opportunities up for you, okay? So that gives everybody, we give, uh, everybody's getting three weeks off, right? Okay. Everybody's getting the official dead period off, TSSAA, which is two weeks. My team has an extra week, your team has an extra week. Yours does not, your two weeks off, or three? Okay. So two or three weeks, everybody gets those off, okay? And then in addition to that, we're giving you another six hours to miss. So we feel like it's pretty, um, you know, pretty lenient in terms of we understand you need to go somewhere, but not too much because we got, we got stuff to do. Yeah. So time for time again, it just means that you can miss up to six hours, but you're going to pay for the time you missed with time in the community serving. We are often asked to do appearances and community service things. So it really works out, hand, it works well hand in hand with each other. Um, you know, you guys missed something, but we're able to help out in the community. So that's great. Okay. That's all I've got. And then you guys, please read through the rest of that. Uh, Miss Griggs is going to come talk about the score sheet. Okay, so the next page in your packet, if you're following along, is the score sheet. You see it up here. Um, I guess I still need to talk loud, even though I have a microphone on. Can you guys hear me in the back? Okay. 
Well, I'm, I just feel like we're going to be screaming into the video, but if we don't, you're not going to hear us. So, all right, so communication skills, that's the first thing you're scored on. You need to project your voice. You need to have a clear voice. You need to be enthusiastic. You need to be loud. A lot of this you can read and see, motion technique, your sharpness. Um, if it's supposed to be a T level, you need to be at T level, not like low. Um, dance technique, coordination, rhythm. Okay, toe touch. The maximum score is five points. Okay, you lose a point if you don't execute any of those things on the side. So head up, chest up, pointed toes, etc. Standing tumbling. When you come to do your standing tumbling, you shouldn't ask us, what should I do? You should perform whatever skill you can safely perform that you know how to perform that gets you the most points. Does that make sense? So if, um, if you can do a, um, a standing full or a triple toe tuck, that gets you the most points. If you can't do that, then you go down until you find something you can do. Some girls try out and they have no tumbling. Our uh, varsity basketball is non-tumbling. So if you have tumbling and you're trying out for us, you still need to throw your tumbling because it really shows the differentiation between your work ethic and how far you've pushed yourself. But just know that you won't be tumbling in a routine, okay? Uh, running tumbling, same thing. The safest skill, the, the best skill that you can safely perform. And there won't be coaches there that will spot you. Your athlete needs to be able to throw that skill on their own. Uh, stunt technique. There's a section for flyers. It's in the first section. Okay, so um, flyers, what gets you the highest points? Scorpion scale. Okay, uh, what loses points? If your knees are bent, your wrists are bent, drop toes, things like that. Bases and back spots, you lose points in that last column. So if your back is arched, okay, um, if your feet are moving around everywhere, uh, that is how you lose points. Um, and then we just take the total number of points. There's four judges, so um, there's a variety. So I'll be scoring, uh, Wartman will be scoring, Gregory will be scoring, and then Elvis from Premier. So um, every athlete has four sets of eyes on him or her. So he's got a, a good shot. Questions? All right. So I think you're going over calendar. Nope, dragonfly. Really? Can I get one of, will you go click for me? So, can you hear me? Um, I'm Miss Covington, and I am one of the, the coach that goes over all the paperwork that you need for tryouts. So the first thing is not in your packet because it's not ready. Um, we adopted, as Rutherford County, we adopted Dragonfly, and if your child has been an athlete in the last couple of years, you're familiar with that. I'm seeing lots of head nods. Um, baseball, football, all sports do it. Um, as of 3.30 this afternoon, Dragonfly was not ready for the 2021 season yet because, of course, you know, cheerleading starts a little earlier than all the other sports. So do not go and start setting up and signing up on Dragonfly yet. We've been told April 15th, okay? We'll see. <laughs> if it's open on April 15th, you're going to have a Remind account that you're going to get to sign up for here in a little bit, and um, Coach Gregory will send that out on Remind that Dragonfly is now open, and we'll send the code out, this uh, GQ, GTQV code, we'll send all that out to you when it's ready. Okay, so don't worry about Dragonfly per se for tryouts. What I do need you to look at is this other packet that you got. So I'm going to go over this packet with you. Um, I put this packet together. Everything in this packet needs to be turned in for tryouts. The only thing that's not in this packet is the bill for your proof of residency, and you can just paper clip that with it. Okay. So if you'll flip through here, the application that Ms. Gregory talked about at the very beginning is right there on the front. Um, so fill that out, sign it. The next page is the football promissory note, and I'll let Ms. Wartman go over that in more detail when she goes over the calendar. But each squad has their own promissory note. This just lets you kind of know what your price range is going to be. So the football competition squad is there. The next one is the basketball 
competition squad. And then the last one is the JV competition squad. If your child is trying out for all three squads, you need to sign all three promissory notes, okay? The next sheet is that proof of residency sheet. You'll need to fill that out. And again, you'll need to attach a bill with this packet. Now, a lot of you do online billing, and so you don't get paper copies. When you get it on your email, if you'll just print me a copy of that, you can mark out the uh, account number, you can mark out the price, all of that, but I do need your name and address, obviously, still on there, okay? Um, so you can just attach that to the back of this packet. The next page is your coach's recommendation. This you can just pull out of the packet, and this is, needs to be in a sealed envelope and returned to me. Um, you can either, middle schoolers, if you're across the street, um, I know Miss Glass is in the main office up there, and I know she's been really nice in years past to put them all in one big envelope and bring them across um, or send them with one of you. I have an eighth grader over there she can, that's not trying out, so she can bring them to me uh, in one envelope, or they could put it in the courier, but it takes a while to get across the street for some reason in the courier when you send it through the Rutherford County system. Um, or if your teacher just wants to put it in an envelope and sign across it, that'll work too. Okay, but here's that uh, recommendation. The last couple of pages, I put a copy of your TSSAA physical form in there. Now let's talk about physicals. We finally, Coach Gregory and I finally got them to understand last year that tryouts for us are before they say the TSSAA um, um, physicals were to be done. Okay, so our girls were having to get multiple physicals each year because it was running out. So if your physical was dated after March 15th last year, then it is good till May 30th this year. They gave us an extra three months, two and a half months. Okay, so if you're current on a squad right now, then your physical is good through May. So if you make a team, then you'll need to get an updated physical and then it'll last you through May of next year. Does that help? That makes sense? So that way it kind of gives you those little windows because, you know, girls are having to go get physicals. They didn't make a team. Well, now they've wasted that 20, 30, 40, whatever your copay is, dollars. So we finally got that fixed. But here's that form. You can take it to the doctor in this packet and they'll sign it in this packet. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, we would like to, yeah, <laughs> yes, let me check in on that because I think it's still within that year, but then after she, if you make, if she makes a team, she'll need to try out, get a new one. So it's in that window, but let me, I can double check on that. There's a lot of gray areas when it comes to those. So, and then your last three pages is the Premier paperwork. As we've stated, all three teams participate at Premier. Even if your cheerleader is on a squad this year at Premier, uh, Miss Lisa at the front desk asked that we update her files. This is the auto pay form and the family registration form. So that is on the back of that packet. If you'll leave it attached to this packet, then each coach, when they make a team, they get the packets. I keep them in file folders. I hand everybody their own teams. And then we can hand those to Lisa, our first practice. We can pull those off the back. Okay. So hopefully this packet comes to me all in one with the bill on the back. And then the only thing that should be taken out is that teacher recommendation. I hope that helps. Any questions about this packet? Any? Okay. Okay, um, so I'm going to talk about the calendar for the football, co-ed football team. And just a couple things I want to point out. Uh, Ms. Gregory already mentioned the 20, um, the, after we have tryouts that, that come in that night, because we have something planned on the next day. And then the two dates I want to mention are May 9th, and that is when um, one, our choreographer is going to come just for a, a couple hours to um, just evaluate our team. 
And the second um, set of dates I want to mention are our camp dates, and those are on your calendar for July. I'm sorry, June. June 12th, 13th, and 14th, and those are our three dates for mandatory camp that are non-negotiable. So please make sure that you are able to attend those. We're looking at the calendar that looks like this. I see oh. some of you flipping around. Sorry. Okay. This, that's the co-ed calendar. Should be the very next one after the, yeah. yeah. And so those are really our two mandatory dates. We have obviously other things, you know, throughout the summer, but those are, um, that's when we have our choreographer come and we pay him lots of money to come and give us a fabulous routine. And so those are our dates, okay? Um, I just want to touch on one thing. I know that as coaches that we are ACA certified like she talked about. And, and so therefore we will be getting hands on with your child possibly. So understand that if we are touching your child or helping them or catching them, we're doing it for their safety. And so I don't know if you mentioned that before I got here, but I just want to mention that every year we have um, we want to make sure that parents know that we'll be touching if, if someone's fault, especially open gym, like if there's, because that's when they're learning some things. So if there's um, a safety issue and we're helping your child or showing them a grip or holding their foot or catching them, um, we want to make sure everybody is, is okay with that. All right. And then, is that it for me? That's really it for me. Promissory note is in there for football. We just have four dates and, and we are very flexible for those dates. So if you can't pay um, by a certain date, we are very willing to work with you. And so um, those dates are on the calendar, as you can see there. They're, you know, May 13th, June 17th, July, and August. There are four dates there. We don't um, have specifics, as no, none of us do, but um, we have lots of stuff that we have to buy. For a new cheerleader, it's about $600 about, and for an old cheerleader, um, about $1,200. And so um, it's expensive, and we understand that. But we have lots of gear that they buy, and they have um, for each, you know, game they have to have and so but we are very willing to work with each and every one of you if because I couldn't pay $1,200 in one whack that's a lot of money so I don't think I mean I no one could so probably um, so please understand that we are willing to work with you and don't be overwhelmed because it's so much money um, we've had some people pay like $10 a, you know $10 a week and that's perfectly fine we understand that for sure and we generally parents pay for the gear mm -hmm. and we generally fundraise all of our competition right. fees all of our national fees so as long as our fundraisers that we already have in place continue to be as successful as they have, going to nationals with Blackman is free. And I promise you there's not another place in the country that does that. So you're welcome. We have like That's a national fee. Parents, we have like a national fee like for $50 just for a deposit. But then everything else is fundraised. And we have a big booster club. And we, we are strong believers in fundraising. And it takes all of us. We just can't have five parents doing all of it. We have to have everybody on board to do that. And we raise about $1,500 plus per kid. And so it's a lot of fundraising, but at the end of the day, there's no cost for your child to go. And that's plane tickets, that's their room, that's their park hopper, that's all that stuff that we do. And the fees to get in the facility. Do you have any questions for me? No? Did you talk about Okay, so one more thing for, um, for tryouts, like we can't have 20 flyers, 25 flyers. So please understand that while your child in your eyes may be the best flyer that you've ever seen, as coaches, and this is for all of us, as coaches, we're going to do what's best for the entire team. And we all have, um, we feel like we have great expertise at doing what we do. And so there's reasons behind the decisions we make. So please respect those decisions for whatever team that your child makes and um, know that we're doing the best for the whole entire team. Um, and, and try not to get, you know, feelings. I know feelings are going to get hurt, but yes, you're for your child, and that's for sure where you should be, um, but we're for the entire team, and we want to make sure that, that what we're doing is what's best for the entire team, whether it's a sign person or a base or a flyer or, you know, whatever that may be. Okay? Does that cover that? Okay, um, for basketball cheer, the important dates Where are they on this form? Oh, 
first not practice saying the that. first Tuesday in June and July, just that first practice. Oh, okay. Oh, the promissory notes. So the promissory notes first. Um, first payments due by the first Tuesday practice in June. That's going to be June 2nd. The second payment is due by the first practice in July, which is going to be the 7th because the first week is the dead period. And then the third payment's due by the first Tuesday practice in August. Once again, we can work with you on payments if you need. We just need you to communicate with us so we know what's going on, so we're not trying to guess. Um, as far as uh, camps, if you look at the June calendar, our stunt camp is on the 8th and 9th of June, and then the 10th through the 12th is choreography camp. That whole week of camp is mandatory for anyone that makes our squad. Um, if they're not there, they don't learn some of what they need. Um, we're not keeping everyone safe. Uh, it's not fair that you know most of the team has to be there and some aren't, so it's mandatory for everyone for that week. If you look through, there's a few other uh, volunteering days. Um, if you make a squad, we volunteer at the BMS Flame Day on the 21st of May, uh, which is coming up pretty fast. Uh, then there's some um, miracle filled dates, et cetera, in there. Any questions? I'm trying to just go through what's essential. Okay. Okay, um, so for the JV promissory note, the um, payments are the same as basketball uh, ball, I think. Um, our first payment is due the first practice of June, which is June 4th. Our um, July payment is due the first practice in July, which is July 12th. And then the third payment is the first practice in August, and that'll be the school practice that happens on Thursdays after school. Um, just like all the other teams, any issues with payment, just keep me abreast and, um, and I can work with you definitely. Um, as far as the calendar goes, JV is going to add some things this year. Um, we are not only going to compete as um, either all girl or co-ed, whichever we land on, but we're also going to do a game day routine. So we'll be competing in two divisions um, for every competition that we do. Um, we have stunt camp the first two days of June, June 1st and 2nd at Premier. And then we have our choreo camp June 10th through the 12th at Premier. And then we won't have our game day camp until July. July 15th and 16th is when we have game day camp. So um, that is what our summer looks like. I tried to get all of our camps as squeezed together as close as possible, but you're working on somebody else's schedule and they have all these other teams that they're fitting in as well. So it just kind of, that's the way it worked out. Um, we only have one fundraiser that we try to do because Unlike y'all's, I hate doing it. Um, oh, I hate it. Um, and so we do a car wash in the summertime, and it pretty much gets us what we need. Um, what we Last year we fundraised and got new signs, and um, this year we're going to fundraise because we have stuff for our game day routine that we're going to get, like big flags. Um, and, so <laughs> and so that's the JV schedule. Any questions about that? All right, last thing. Um, as your child's filling out the application, I usually mention this, but I just want to be clear. Uh, number two on their little application says, hey, what's your willingness to be uh, participate in the following positions? They're going to need to check everything there if they want to be on my team or her team, okay? Because the bottom line is we're going to tell you where your child fits best in the air or on the ground. They may have been a flyer for the last 20 years, and this year they may be a back spot. So the, the goal there is that you're saying I'm willing to do anything um, because that's the kind of kid that we're looking for that's a team player that's willing to do anything. Lastly, you know, I know especially uh, our, our tradition here has been, um, you know, it, it, we have a great tradition here, but with that great tradition and, and success also comes, you know, rumors of how we do things or how we pick or, oh, you've got to know somebody or it's all political. 
If you actually have been on our team, you know that Ms. Wortman and I don't play games and neither do any of these ladies. We're going to put, why would we play favorites when we're just trying to get the best group of kids we can on the floor? So if they've been on our team before, please don't be intimidated not to put the team that you want to try out for. Um, if you want to be on basketball first, put basketball. If you want to be on co-ed first, put co-ed. If you want to be JV, put JV. But don't be scared to put what you actually want because you never know what we need. We don't go by score. We have have to have X number of back spots. We have to have X number of flyers. We can't just take the top 12 scores. If it's 12 back spots, we don't have a team. So just know that we are very transparent. Yes, we pick our own teams because, and here's, I say this every year, uh, we pick our own teams because every other sport does. Why wouldn't we? I don't, I can't tell you why some strangers don't want, don't think your child should have made my team. I can tell you why I don't think your child's ready. And I'm happy to do that um, afterwards if, if, if that's a conversation you ever want to have with, hey, what can my child work on? I don't mind doing that at all after tryouts. So, um, and I don't think any of us would mind doing that. So, uh, just wanted to throw that out there about the transparency of, of the process, uh, that we're fair and that we're going to pick the best people for the job. Okay. If y'all have any questions afterwards, we're happy to stay. And... Oh, that's most important. Mm -hmm. You might want to know how to get like the routine and stuff. <laughs> okay, so the last couple of slides, you may need your phone or if you want to just take a picture. Um, this is our remind account. So you're going to text in the subject, like what you're going to say, Blaze Cheer, and the phone number is 81010. And if you shoot a text with Blaze Cheer, then that's going to go to our remind. Coach uh, Gregory sends out remind messages, especially as we get closer um, to tryouts. Uh, don't forget today we're doing this. You know, just kind of some reminders. We'll send out the link to the video. Once it gets uploaded, she'll send those links out so you can just click on them. Um, Please do not text me um, questions constantly on that remind. I'm going to hesitate to leave them open for the occasional question, but if it gets too much and you're constantly texting, I'll have to close it down and then you'll have to email Ms. Chesterton with those um, paperwork questions, okay? Um, so that is your biggest way to get information. And most of you probably have reminds through your, your child's teachers. I know we use it religiously on our squad now. Um, Ms. Griggs, will you hit the next slide? These are our three Twitter accounts. So if you have a Twitter, um, we if one of us posts something, we religiously try to go back and retweet it. So you can follow one or all of us. Um, but those are our Twitter accounts. If you want to take a picture of those um, and go follow us, you're going to get lots of information. We will start putting out all of the tryout information and stuff. Um, basketball is still in season. So right now I'm covered up with basketball stuff, but eventually it will start being tryout information. Next one. Okay, so she talked about this earlier. We will send this link out, but the BHS YouTube channel, um, I believe if you just type in Blackman, Blackman Cheer, it's a channel, then you should be able to find it. But once we get the remind going the next couple of days, she'll send that link out so you can just click it from your phone. It's a lot easier it's that way. One cheer and one dance. That's it. It's the fight song, the Blackman High fight song, and the cheer. We'll do a cheer. Yeah, make sure it's the 2020, not the 19. And she's going to remove the 19. So don't go look in tonight because it's not there. Okay. And then the last page, I believe, Coach Griggs. Yes. So as we said, we allow you to choose what teams you want to try out for. So we do that by a ranking form. There's a QR code. And I see most of you being able to do that. You're going to sign up for tryouts. This is your sign up. And tomorrow, I will have Coach Gregory send this out on Remind as well, because you're going to sign up for those Reminds tonight, if you could at all possible. That would be amazing. Parents and cheerleaders sign up for the Remind. That way, you're getting them too. But on this QR code, this is a form. You're going to put in your student's name, first and last, what grade they're in, what school they're at now. And then you're going to have a drop down. First option, second option, third option. So. The first option is what team do they want to be on? What is their first choice, second choice, and third choice? Please understand that if you only drop down and put one choice, that's the only team that will look at you at tryouts. Does everybody understand that? So if you put the first choice is co-ed, then JV and basketball is not going to look at you at tryouts because you are, we call it suiciding, to that squad only. Okay? But you get to rank those choices. 
and this is the form to do that. Absolutely. So you will get a name tag when you come in that first day. We will draw numbers, and that will be your number, okay? So the first day of tryouts, you'll come in, you'll pick up your name tag, and you'll randomly draw a number, and that will be your tryout number for the rest of the week. Let's say that after day one, you realize that, whoa, wait a minute, I really want to try out for that team in instead. At the end of tryouts, you can come up to the table and find me, and I'll make that change for you, okay? On the very last day of tryouts, on that third day, my, my question, my job in tryouts, because I don't score, is to say, Ms. Cambridge, you said you wanted this, this, and this. Is that still your option? And you can make a change right before you leave for tryouts that final day. Which okay. just gives us an idea. Absolutely. Okay. But this just helps us kind of get going on who to watch that first day. Okay. Any questions on these forms? All right. If you have any questions, we'll be up here for individual questions. You guys have a great night.